Okay, we're unmuted and it's recording. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Alex McDonald, business administrator for the township. This uh, this meeting is uh, starting at seven thirty here in town hall. It's also being recorded and. Uh, uh, zoomed, uh, so we do have some online participants. Um, this is the second of two uh, field discussion public information sessions. Um, I'd just like to start off this as I did the previous meeting in the library uh, auditorium, in which we had, I think, uh, close to more than 100 people uh, in attendance. It was a great turnout. Um, that the purpose of this is to start a discussion on fields in the township of Milburn. Uh, what this is not is a uh, discussion about par three. Um, you know, we had had that presentation back in February of this year uh, to present an idea to the township committee. Um, and we've heard a lot from people at the previous meeting uh, regarding the par three. And I think we made it very clear at that meeting that the direction has, um, you know, uh, been changed to look at this as a holistically um, and not focus on one particular spot, but use a community process through uh, the um, master plan and the element of the master plan that deals with recreation and open space, uh, which we'll get into a little bit tonight. So uh, we did not bring some of the others that you may have seen if you were at the library, but we did bring the town planner from Topology, Graham Petto, who is here tonight. Also, Chris Myers, uh, who is the recreation director and Neil Healy, who is the Assistant Re Recreation Director. Um, and here we're just gonna go through about a 20 minute, 25 minute presentation. And after that, open it up to the community, ask questions, provide comments, uh, provide feedback. Um, in follow up to the previous meeting that took place on March 2nd over at the library, um, I just did wanna let the public know that at that time we had mentioned that, and, and through uh, a series of discussions that took place at the Township Committee, um, we had let the community know that we were going to sort of go down parallel tracks. Um, one of those was what we're doing tonight and starting a process uh, regarding the uh, master plan element, uh, which hasn't been updated in the township since 1991. But the other one was to start uh, a communication with uh, the Board of Ed, who we made it very clear at that meeting, the previous meeting, that we, we appreciate and have a good relationship with our Board of Ed. We work closely with them currently um, on the usage of fields. Um, but, you know, we wanted to have more robust conversation about what we could do going forward with the current field setup. And so uh, we have started those conversations. Uh, we actually met um, last Friday on the 24th, and we are starting the process of, you know, what we hope uh, will be a harder look at the design, the, the layout, and the um, the possibilities for those backfields at the high school, but we're just starting out. So we wanna make sure that we're respectful of that process and that we are um, working together uh, with our partners at the Board of Ed uh, and that we can you know, continue to develop a fruitful relationship from that so that we can get things accomplished. So uh, tonight, again, we're just gonna go through a quick presentation um, regarding the fields and then we're gonna open up the q and I'm gonna turn it over to Chris Myers who's gonna do the presentation and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks everybody, thanks for coming out. Can you hear me? Okay. okay, so Alex went through a quick introduction of everybody. Again, what we're trying to accomplish with uh, the discussion today is uh, talk about how we can increase field space, in improve our current fields, and also get the priority to, of the fields to the community members. Um, and then how can we get there? So one of the first things we want to talk about is the, uh, the master plan. So I'll turn it over to Graham. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, as um, Alex mentioned, my name is Graham Petto. Uh, I'm a principal of topology uh, serving here uh, as the township planner. Uh, happy to be with you all this evening to kind of help guide this process from a planning perspective as well. Um, as Alex, um, Mr. Reynolds indicated, um, you know, the existing open space and recreation element of the township's master plan was adopted uh, over 30 years ago. So the document uh, is a little dated at this point. However, uh, we do have much more recent um, master plan exercises that have involved uh, evaluations of recreational needs and opportunities uh, here within the township. And I've highlighted uh, these on the 
the two slides that I'll review here. Um, so the first is the 2018 master plan re-examination and update, uh, which was adopted, of course, back in 2018. Um, objective 1.04 of that plan document uh, indicates uh, a goal or an objective to provide areas for recreation to serve the needs of all age groups, including indoor and outdoor recreation facilities, uh, as well as active and passive recreational opportunities. Um, so as part of the 2018 master plan process, um, that was highlighted as an objective uh, to, to accomplish that within the community. Um, in addition, the master plan has uh, specific recommendations around different types of uses categorically. Um, so the master plan recommendations specific for public uses on page 58 of the plan, uh, there's two statements that I highlighted here that I thought would be you know, uh, germane to this evening's uh, discussion. The first is um, that it should be emphasized that the community outreach process indicated that there was a deficiency in the amount of active recreation in the community. Um, so even five years ago, this was an issue that, that was talked about. Um, and that I did want to note, I have a little asterisk and a note here that that community outreach process included a, a 650 survey respondents uh, as part of that community outreach process for the 2018 master plan. Uh, the second statement that I pulled uh, from the master plan recommendations uh, from 2018 is uh, to identify and potentially acquire lands for new active recreation fields. New active recreation fields should be all purpose fields with artificial turf. Um, so it's important to, to remember what the community has talked about uh, previously as we move forward and contemplate moving forward into the future. Um, and I did also wanna highlight um, even prior to that, the, the, the prior master plan uh, re-examination uh, back in 2002, 2008 um, did also address the adequacy of open space. Um, and this statement uh, I felt was important to share this evening as well. So this was back in 2002. The 2002 master plan re-examination indicated that there was a need to reevaluate the adequacy of active and passive open space in the township, particularly lands that were currently utilized for water supply purposes and functioning as open space. The, the 2008 re-examination did not evaluate the adequacy of open space to accommodate demand in the community. Current status discussion with township employees in 2018 indicate that there is still a need for the township for additional active recreation facilities. Um, so it's important to note that, you know, this has been an ongoing uh, conversation uh, here within the community. Um, and I'm happy that we're having this conversation and this is certainly where planning starts. Planning starts with the input from you all um, to help guide the process and how you wanna see things shaped uh, here in the Township of Millburg. So thank you. Thanks, Greg. So the other thing we wanted to talk to about, uh, talk to everybody about today was informing everybody what we use the fields for. Um, you know, when throughout this presentation, the other presentations I've done, when, when you hear, hear me mention us, I'm referring to the recreation department, I'm also referring to all the community groups as well. Um, but in this instance, I want to focus on what the recreation department uses for fields. So for soccer in the fall, we have uh, programs that run kindergarten through eighth grade. Flag football is now a first through eighth grade program, uh, leagues uh, throughout all those grade levels. Tackle football, while our Milburn numbers have gone down a little bit, um, so did Springfield and a few other towns. So we did merge with Springfield a few years ago. We still do offer third through eighth grade tackle football um, to our residents. Uh, cross country is one of our bigger fall sports programs, and that uh, serves fifth through eighth graders. And field hockey, we have programs for the third through eighth graders. Now in the spring, which is starting up soon and there are still spots available if anybody wants to register. Um, we, we offer t-ball, baseball and softball for kindergarten and first grade. Our girls, girls softball leagues range from first through eighth grade and we also do have a sixth to eighth grade travel team. Track and field, which uh, is at the wait list right now, it's one of our more popular spring sports, uh, is for fourth to eighth graders. Uh, we will be bringing back uh, cricket clinics uh, this spring and that serves the fifth to eighth grade. Um, and our adult softball leagues for the men and the women, that covers about half the spring. So I'll cover why, um, you know, why we're going to be bringing that up uh, a little bit later on. So other than what the recreation department uses for fields, uh, we have other uh, groups within Milburn that utilize those spaces. So we have the Milburn Soccer Club, uh, the Milburn Lacrosse Club, Milburn Shore Hills Youth Baseball is a quasi-public uh, entity. They're a, a group of volunteers that fall under the umbrella of the township and the recreation department. Um, there's uh, a few adult soccer groups that utilize the fields. Um, we've heard from various uh, cricket groups, uh, both at the youth and the adult level, um, that are interested in using fields. Uh, there's been various Milburn girls softball clubs over the past few years. Um, as recently as this past fall, we've heard from a group of 100% uh, Milburn uh, kids that want to play uh, travel softball in the fall and other, and other times during the season. 
Um, there's also the Millbrae Baseball Academy. So these are just an example, examples of uh, how we utilize our field space. Now, these two graphs here show how we've grown over the past uh, 12, or, or 12 years. So when you see current on there, that's referring to uh, 2022. Um, and as you can see, our sports teams that we have for all the community uh, youth groups has gone up a lot even since uh, COVID uh, in or pre COVID in 2019. And the reason why it's important to focus on the sports teams is because they're the ones that utilize the fields, right? You're not going to be putting, um, you're not going to be basing fields on, on the participants necessarily, but it's really the, the teams that take up the, uh, the slots on the fields. Um, but I did share the uh, participants as well. And as you can see, we've had a steady increase over the years. And through all that time, uh, we have not had any increase in fields in, in many, many years. One of the things to focus on when it comes to quality of fields are artificial turf fields. Graham kind of touched on it a little bit from the master plan stuff. Um, this graph on the left, I want to clarify it a little bit. It was confusing from the first uh, presentation. This is trying to show that Milburn has three artificial turf fields. Okay, the, the dark blue spot in the bottom is what is available to the community um, from a priority standpoint. So from Milburn, we own half of the library field, which is an artificial turf field now. Um, the Board of Ed owns the other half. So in reality, we don't have control. Our community groups, our recreation department programs don't have first dibs, I guess it's a better way to put it, on, our, uh, on any of the artificial turf fields in town. When you compare us to Summit and to Verona, um, they have five fields available to their, you know, to the, the entire community. Uh, four in Summit are controlled by the community, uh, and three in Verona. Um, I also recently learned that Summit has access to Oak Knoll, um, their, their turf field over there. So you can actually make that six um, that are available to the, the, uh, the community in Summit. So comparing that to how many kids are in the school district, as you can tell, Milburn has a lot more K through eight students compared to Summit, twice as many as Verona, and Verona has many more turf fields uh, than, than we do. One of the other factors I put together, um, we're looking at what we call playable hours. So this is essentially the hours that are available to us as a community um, in the fall and in the spring. And for the fall and spring, I'm focusing on just the 10 weeks, the 10 weeks when everybody wants to use the fields. Um, so we're talking like April through mid-June for the, for the spring and then September through mid-November uh, for the fall. So when you consider those 10 weeks for those two seasons um, and we added up all the field space that's available to us um, from the park side, uh, the Board of Ed, um, and then we, we compared that to what we need and that's uh, a multitude of counting up all the hours that have been requested from the various groups um, the amount of times you know been turned, you know, certain groups have been turned away based on field space. Um, so from this, the, the, from these two tables, where we come up with that, we're at a deficit of about two thousand two hundred hours uh, for those for those two seasons. So there's something to consider too that how this is not necessarily the most accurate number is there's a lot of factors that should go into it. We're pulling in all the total hours for all the fields into one pool. There's certain sports that can't play on all the fields. So you have lacrosse. Um, we can't put lacrosse at South Mountain School Field. That's, there, it wouldn't be safe to play lacrosse over there, right? Uh, field hockey, for example, um, they can only play on the artificial turf fields. So they're very, very limited to where they can play. And then, you know, as we mentioned before, we don't have any cricket fields available too. So every sport has their, um, has their limitations and that's not factored in for playable hours. Um, this also does not include the uh, non-town and non-BOE uh, facilities. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's a facility in Florham Park that the lacrosse club um, rents, spends a lot of money there, um, so they can have extra space. Uh, we've also relied on the Pingree's baseball field. We, we have an annual lease with them for, for a baseball field. So those aren't factored into the playable hours. Um, it also doesn't factor in all the times we've been canceled from school activities and, and athletic uh, sports. Um, because again, it's their, a lot of those facilities, as I'll go over later, are um, they're their properties, Board of Ed property. They obviously will have priority on those on those fields. And there's also a lot of locations that are limited by uh, limited to practice only. So while they're all they're all in that big bucket of the playable hours, you can't play games on some of those locations. South Mountain Field, a school field, you can't play can't play games there. Um, if you're familiar with Hobart 
field, um, that little park field that we have, can't, can't play games there. So there's lots of different limitations to factor in. Um, and ultimately the goal for the, from a capacity standpoint, as you see the capacity shows 123% on there, you, you wanna get below 100% so you have room for growth. Um, as you can see the numbers in terms of youth participants has been growing. So we wanna make sure that we get ourselves as best to, or as close to 100% and below as possible. So I'm not gonna go through every single field one by one, but this is a, a list of what's available from the township standpoint. Uh, the Ger Gerald Park Hobart field, as I mentioned before, um, it should be a citizens field. It's now been recently renamed. Um, they, uh, th that's, a, that's a field that is, as I mentioned before, owned by half the town and half the Board of Ed. Um, Old Shore Hills Park and Taylor Park is what we have available to the town. And then for the Board of Ed fields, you have all the um, elementary school fields, the fields that we have over at the high school, um, the middle school field, and then there's a paper mill field that's right across the street uh, from the uh, middle school. Slayton Field is where Wyoming School is, if you're not familiar with, uh, with where that, with that field is uh, attached to. And then we have South Mountain and Washington. So a lot of people ask the question over the past couple of months is like, what do you need for fields? What kind of space do you need? We've got a lot of ideas of where you can just plot fields here and there, but it's, it's not as easy um, as it seems. When you're talking about a multi-purpose full-size field, you're looking at about 86,000 square feet. And that would give you all ages soccer, lacrosse, football, field hockey, uh, youth softball, and 12U uh, and baseball can also go there. So think of like the size of a, just like your, your regular football field, like over at Nigel Field, that, that's what a full-size field would be. Um, if you're able to add about 20,000 uh, square, square feet, you can get a multi-purpose field that can include 13 plus baseball. So that would include the adult baseball, the 90 foot base uh, baseball um, and the adult softball as well. Now, if you were to put two full size fields next to each other, if you're able to fit that, you would get everything that you see above on those lists, all those sports, everything. Um, and then you would also have enough space uh, for a cricket field. So just to give everybody an idea of how much space is needed for these, these various uh, sports and these various fields. You also have to factor in parking, obviously. So if we're adding fields anywhere, you gotta make sure people have a place to park. Um, so a very rough estimate, you're looking at at least 60 spaces per field, like for per full size field. Um, and that comes out to approximately uh, 17,000 square feet. So the next thing I wanna cover are the, the previous field discussions that we've had. And as Alex mentioned before, you know, we've been in, in, in discussions with the Board of Ed about other, you know, other locations. And you know, we're, we're, we're open to revisiting things, but I just wanna give everybody an idea of what the rec department and the township has pursued um, over the last 20 or 30 years. So um, I'll start from the top really quick. There's a, um, there's a spot in Gerald Park, if you're familiar with the, the field, um, field B, which is all the way in the back, to the corner of JFK and, and Parsonage. Um, there's like a wooded area back there. We looked at that as recently as last year. We had a study done and it was determined that it was wetlands. So even though that we were hoping to maybe put a field down there, um, we, we were into that limitation. Um, a few years ago, I want to say maybe six or seven years ago, we looked at maybe relocating a couple golf holes over at the golf course, keeping all nine holes, but relocating a little bit in order to fit would have been a very small field, probably a library field, size field. Um, and uh, when those, when we got the study done and looked at where the golf holes could go, it infringed on the on different wetlands areas. So that was another uh, limitation. There's an area behind Glenwood School that the township does own. There are possible wetlands concerns back there, but again, we're gonna we're gonna revisit all the options. Um, there has been an area behind the high school that was pursued in the past. It's owned by New Jersey American Water. Not really an option because it involves wells. and There's really no interest for them to, to sell that land. JFK Parkway, which is right across, uh, there's a site right across the street from the, um, from the par three. And uh, there it's, it may be a space for one field. It's currently being used by public works. Um, so that's the limitation that we have with that. Uh, people have brought up the Fox Hill Reserve site, which is uh, sometimes referred to as the Oki site. Um, that is owned by the Board of Ed. So obviously it's not our land, it's the it's Board of Ed land and it's it's their prerogative of what we want to do over there. Um, and also just let everybody know, there's a couple spaces in East Orange that we have pursued in the past. The, there's an area in Passaic Avenue, I'll show it. Um, there's a map on the next slide. Um, an area in Parsonage Hill Road 
where um, we were looking at possibly adding two fields, we would have to lease the land from East Orange. They were only interested in leasing it. Um, and then it, it's, a, it's a big risk because we would we'd have the opportunity to build our own fields. We have to pay for the fields, but then with the lease, once that lease is over, we're kind of at the mercy if they're willing to and able to, to renew that lease. So um, that's one of the, the, the downsides for one of those options. Now, unfortunately for everybody here, it's kind of really small, but the people at home <laughs> might be able to see it's a little easier. So I'll try to use my mouse so I can show you some of the areas. This is that Passaic Avenue area um, uh, that I was just talking about. And the Parsonage Hill area is over here. So this, all this yellow is within the boundaries of Milburn Township, but it is owned by East Orange. Um, just as a frame of reference, that JFK site is about right here. Um, all of Gerald Park, including the Par 3, is in this area. And then we have Taylor Park down here. Um, trying to see if there's anything else. Oh, that the uh, the Glenwood School area is down in this in this area, and the Oakey Track um, Fox Hill Reserve property is right there. So this gives you an idea of um, you know kind of what our limitations are, and you know maybe some different areas that we've we've tried in the past. So what we're trying to do is, and as we've mentioned, we're trying to evaluate our current facilities, kind of find out how we can better utilize the space that we already own. Um, how can we improve fields that we already have access to? So, you know, as, as Alex mentioned, you know, in our discussions with the Board of Ed, you know, how can we improve um, some of those facilities so that we can improve our, our situation and find ways to, uh, to increase our playable hours? Um, you know, ultimately, if we're able to find space and find a way to do it, creating fields would be great because that gets us to the top of the list, you know, in terms of priority on fields. Um, so that's something that's a goal of ours. And then also whenever any fields that are going to be created, we want to make them as multi-purpose as possible. The one thing I didn't mention with uh, one of the benefits with artificial turf fields is you can line them with many, many different sports, right? So um, that puts a lot less stress on like maintenance in terms of lining fields for different sports. If you have the artificial turf field down, you can play so many different sports on there. We, we have it at the library right now. It gives a lot of flexibility over there. Um, and it's very beneficial. So in terms of the path forward, um, we're already at that this, uh, this next session um, that, uh, that we're, we're at right now. Uh, we want to continue the discussion, continue to provide updates um, and progress to the community. Um, as we mentioned before, updating the master plan element for recreation and open space. And then ultimately find a way that you know maybe you know we can do a feasibility study on multiple fields in town and to find out you know really what our what our options are. So um, that's it for the presentation part. Um, I'm going to send it back over to Alex. We're going to have a, a, a Q and A, um, and then once this is completed, um, we we're all the staff are going to hang out here. If anybody you know feels more comfortable coming to us um, to ask questions. And then um, also the, uh, the QR code that you see on the screen there, or you can go to the website. Um, if you wanna submit any comments, we've gotten a lot of good feedback and, and comments um, over the past few weeks. So if anybody else wants to, to add to that, we'll probably have that open for another, another week or so. Okay. Thanks, Chris. So um, just to add a couple of things, um, one is that this presentation is on the Township's website. So if anybody wants to view it a little bit larger, um, you can do that. Um, also, as Chris mentioned, uh, this field comments um, area so that you can you can put in your comments if you don't say anything tonight or you feel more comfortable putting it in writing or whatever it might be or want to just add to what you say tonight. Um, also, just want to add sort of a, an addition to what he uh, Chris had mentioned about, you know, with with the Board of Ed as we kind of go down these these dual tracks right one of one of the things is that we're also talking about not only fields and how how can we how can we better utilize what's currently available to the township as a whole but also how can we maximize the usage and you know through better coordination and through better planning and things like that um, which will be helpful as well so um, you know again a lot of this discussion has created a lot of um, a lot of good uh, feedback and so we hope that that continues tonight um, just a couple I guess ground rules so that uh, when we get into the Q&A here is that this is 
much more informal. Um, so we're not going to put limits or time limits on anybody, but I just ask that everybody be respectful. We do have quite a few people in the room that you don't, uh, that you limit your, your, uh, your comments. Um, we're not going to engage in a back and forth, but we're certainly happy to answer any questions that we can once you're finished speaking. Um, <clears throat> the, the other thing is just remember, you know, this is, this is the first step in the process. This is the first step in, in, in adding a, uh, you know, putting in, uh, the, the community, um, input and 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 process and so let's start it off on a really sort of respectful and and uh, good tone um we are all neighbors and we're all here to try to accomplish what i think is probably the same thing and is what is the best and smartest way to approach this this issue when it comes to uh, a, a deficit in fields um and certainly um you know the collective goodwill and collective head of everybody that's 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 a part of the community will be the best way to get there. So, just want to uh, just wanted to lay out those ground rules. And with that, we're going to start in the room. We know we do have some participants on Zoom, and we'll get to them. Um, but for those that want to uh, make a comment, please come up to the podium. This microphone is on. Make your comments, ask your questions, whatever it may be. Uh, and then, like I said, we won't necessarily engage in a dialogue um, just to keep things moving. But uh, we'll happy to answer any questions that we can. Thank you. Yes, and good evening, everyone. Um, I thank I thank the uh, the Recreation Department for engaging with the community. My name is Catherine Feld. I live at Eleven Alexander Lane in Short Hills. Um, professionally, I am an attorney in New York. Uh, my practice area is regulatory asset management. But more importantly, personally, my husband Jeffrey and I have lived in town for about 30 years. We raised our children here. We're very passionate about Milburn Short Hills. And we really thank everyone for engaging with the community on how to solve the need for more fields. I will say from my own perspective, I'm, I'm gratified and pleased that the Re Recreation Department has walked back walked back from what appeared to be a single solution to um, demolish Jiro Park as a solution for more fields. So I thank you for that very, very much. Um, what I'd like to see going forward to better understand the, the alternatives, you know, um, you, know, a, you know, perhaps in the next iteration, uh, comments from the Board of Education, my vision, if I were running your meeting, I would, I would, I would be very interested to hear a joint meeting of the Recreation Department and the Board of Education to hear the different possibilities. I think, as was discussed on March second, the idea of putting turf possibly on some of the existing school fields that was a good idea that was came that came up, and I, I was pleased to hear that. Um, I'd like to, for the next presentation. I would like to put dollars and cents around the different alternatives. Uh, including putting turf on the existing school fields, um, maybe uh, pursuing, you know, trying a little bit harder perhaps with the city of East Orange. Maybe, maybe times have changed. Um, you know, given their economic situation right now, maybe they're interested in selling rather than leasing. So my my observation at this point in time would be simply that I hope the next iteration and involvement with the town would include a slide deck with the different alternatives and the different proposals with a price tag attached. But thank you for engaging with us. We are very appreciative. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Just a, just a comment on that a, a little bit is uh, two things. One is that, um, and I appreciate sort of the desire to have some additional uh, information regarding those possible solutions. Um, but I think that in going down that road, it's going to take something a little bit more than, you know, just rec or, um, or, or myself or members at the board of ed to look at that. And, and perhaps that is in the form of a, um, uh, a, a, a study uh, with those fields to understand what, if any limitations exist back there, what the possibility in terms of reconfiguration and maximizing the use, um, as well as uh, what sort of, um, you know, turf or lights or anything like that might be possible. So uh, I think that to your point, that is sort of hopefully the next step um, in that, you know, there's something a little bit more formal done uh, rather than us coming up with um, sort of uh, our 
uh, uh, estimate or thoughts. Um, in our last presentation, when we did present the, the PAR-3 as a solution or a possible solution, um, it was meant not as the only solution, but more so that uh, what we were looking for at that time, just to be clear, was a feasibility study. We were looking at trying to figure out whether it was even possible, right? Much like we've gone through in some of these other examples. Um, and so the same thing here, right? We need to make sure that that is, you know, even possible. So, um, and just a comment further about East Orange. Um, I can... <laughs> I've been in those conversations. I've spoken to uh, both the mayor and the administrator in, in East Orange. And I think that in those conversations, were, which weren't all that long ago, it was very clear to me. And I think that we need to, to an extent, be respectful of the fact that it was very clear to me that they have no intention of selling their land. So. Hi, uh, ben Stoller, uh, Melbourne resident. Uh, so before we start, big thanks to Chris. I know Chris very well. Uh, all my kids have played rec sports. Uh, two of, are in college now, and I have two still at home. Uh, my son, uh, who was actually paralyzed in a wrestling event when he was 11, uh, he, got his, he was able to walk six months later. But what the rec department did to help us out, I'll never forget. So Chris, big kudos to you guys. Uh, he played football. He actually played bata. Uh, uh, clean up batter on the baseball team that year. Uh, I've coached in this town for approximately eight years. I know every field uh, discussion. I know the complaints. I know the positives, the negatives. Um, you know, what, one of the things that we need to see here is, you know, and I'm glad we're opening this mic up to town input instead of doing everything in a vacuum, is that the part three means a lot. My daughter's played there. This young man's played there. It's a part of the fabric of this community and it needs to stay in place. And I know we've tabled that. I assume it's off the table. Uh, well, I'll, I'll answer. If you want, okay, so uh, that that's off the table. Uh, one thing of concern I've, I'm hearing today is that we haven't had a master plan update since 1991. That's abhorrent. That's a uh, or 2008, 91, whatever it is. I'm, sure not how, I'm not sure how we put it 100% affordable housing without a master plan input update, but that's a discussion for another day. Uh, it really is. Um, it does beg the question of who's doing this planning and the updating and such. Uh, the sports academy I know is sitting vacant, correct? No, or somebody bought it? Ah, somebody bought it. So that, I've always thought that would be a great place for the town to own. Uh, uh, but the big difference between the turf fields and the grass fields, it's huge. It depends on when you can practice, when you can play, et cetera. So whatever we do, I do think we need to do turf fields, uh, and it needs to be done in conjunction with the Board of Education. Um, I asked a question uh, at the last town committee about the Board of Education and our interactions with them and who's going to pay for the additional uh, catch-up of 100% affordable students in our educational system here. The answer I got back was very very scary. He said, we don't care about it. It's a board of education's problem. Well, it's not, can, it's the town residents problem. Can we just stay on topic? Mr. I'm on Stoller. topic. Yes. Okay. Let me finish. So the town pays the taxes. We own this town, the residents, everyone sitting in this room, not the town council, not the board, the BA uh, and not our attorneys. So when we think about discussions, it's like a balloon. You push one part of a balloon, the other side comes out. So even if the Board of Education is worrying about the monies and the revenues and the town committee is not, it all goes into our pocket, comes out of our pocket. Very disturbing to hear that comment last week. But again, let's just stay on topic. We're talking about fields. I mean, we're going to have an affordable housing session on I, April 17th. I understand, but this is, this is what's wrong is that you don't understand how it all relates. The town is paying this. It's our money. If we build the fields and the Board of Education doesn't want us to build them, I don't understand how that even happens. And that's something I think needs to be rectified through good communication, transparency, accountability, and adherence to good corporate governance. We just had a governance attorney up here. That's what needs to be done, but I digress. Thank you guys. So I'll, I'll, just, I'll just clarify a couple of things. Um, one is that uh, it is the element of the master plan that re in regards to open space and recreation that has not been updated since 1991. 
the master plan was updated in 2018. In addition, since you made the affordable housing comment, the affordable housing uh, element or fair share housing element of the master plan was produced in 2018. So, um, and as you heard from Graham regarding the master plan, there were several comments even in that 2018 uh, iteration of the master plan reexamination that dealt with recreation. Um, you know, I'm, I, I can't comment on, 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 on the comment that you heard at the Township Committee, but certainly um, from a governance standpoint, everyone that works with the Township or the Board of Ed understands that in a tax bill, your tax bill includes the library, the municipal portion, the, the school portion, and the county and the county's open space portion. All those things go into everyone's complete tax bill. All right. So in a year where, say, the municipal government doesn't raise the taxes and the school does, your tax bill is still going to go up and you're still going to think, well, my tax bill went up. So we completely understand that. I was actually at a meeting one time where a resident said, why would you raise my taxes? And we let her know that we didn't. But the school had at that time or the county or whomever. But you see it as one tax bill. So I, I don't think that's lost on anybody here. Um, but appreciate your comments and certainly understand that, you know, as, as we go through this process, pushing one side of the balloon, so to speak, does impact the other side. Um, and that's why having a good relationship with the Board of Ed and continuing those discussions is really important. And, and what's the, uh, I'm, I'm, it's not, not a dial. If you want to talk to me after, we'll certainly talk. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. Um, so the part three off the table, I think as we're presenting it now, yes. You know, what we're doing is a community effort. Now, if the community decides at some point that that part three is something to be explored or at least feasible, yeah, feasibility study done, then absolutely. But that will be a community decision. Um, my name is Jeff Feld and you met my wife tonight and you know how she sets agendas. Um, a lot of people do have to understand that Graham is relatively new to our community. And Graham, unfortunately, I think you have a big burden now, because as a part of this master plan analysis, I think you have to look at the vacant land analysis that was done in 2018 and see if that was accurate and see whether we go forward. I just, I'm sorry, you have to bear that burden because there's an interrelationship between the affordable housing projects and the fields. We need to know what land is available. As to East Orange, I have a different attitude to that, and partly because of my past experience. When many of you walk around the reservoir in um, West Orange, do you know how that was acquired by the county? How they got the lease? Because there was a building there, and Orange never paid their real estate taxes to West Orange, and West Orange started foreclosing. I, I'm going to start looking at when we look at East Orange, when they built a new building, did we change their tax assessment? Did we? Are they paying taxes on the solar panels that are on, on parts of the show? I don't know the answer to that, but I think that's something we have to look at, that maybe they're not paying their fair share to this town and that there could be trading. As to Passaic, there used to be on the Passaic part where, where East Orange was, that was a shooting gallery for policemen where the county had to go train. They shut it down, I don't know how many years ago. I have a feeling that area, when we talk about leasing, that could be maybe done. Because when we, I know Mr. Cosgrove might be talking about when we talk about AstroTurf fields, they have a limited lifetime. And when we talk about a lease, 10 year lease, by the time that lease is over, we amortize the property. But it's very important that we get a feel of what the vacant land is. I think it's also very important because when we start hearing about the budget and taxes, I think we need to know how much unencumbered money does this town have? That's not your issue. That's someone else's who's not here today. That we need to start trying next Tuesday, how much unencumbered monies are here that we maybe pay for these fields rather than bonding for them very shortly. Um, and remember, there is a big issue here. We're hearing about long-term tax exemptions. East Orange, Newark, Orange did not pay their share to the county. We should be going to the county saying, we are paying too much money in taxes Maybe you, Joe D, because you're always into fields and parks, why don't you build a park for us because we overpaid our taxes? Um, looking at that, and also we talk about shared services. I believe Livingston built a cricket field. Have we looked into about sharing that cricket field with, the, with, with other neighborhoods? Because when we look at it, as we look at planning today going forward, we have to talk about shared services. 
whether it's going to be fire, tax collections, that is the future. And we should not lose sight of the Livingston Mall. Because there's a lawsuit going on right now who, with Mr. Cantor is very available, it's most likely the Livingston Mall site is going to be redeveloped. And if that is, there should be maybe parks putting in their own fields. We have to start looking outside the box with novel ideas. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Diane Eglo, former mayor and deputy mayor. So I have a little bit of idea of what I'm talking about. I guess um, I'm glad part three seems off the table for now. If you do go ahead with a feasibility study, though, it would be the township committee that would decide that, not the community, unless they all came out and raised pitchforks again and said that they don't want even a feasibility study to look at the part three. Oh, okay, and I guess I, you know, I came tonight because I really wanted to hear what went on at your joint meeting with the Board of Ed that Friday that you had. So I'm thinking, is the Board of Ed amenable to turfing their fields? And are they going to spend the money for the feasibility studies? Because when people ask me, well, there is this wall between the Board of Ed and the Township Committee. So who does the town get to chip in money legally? If they decide to turf their fields, which the big plan behind the high school, which was talked about when Mr. Hogan was still here, if that goes through and then everyone gets more access, because as you know, you can't use the paper mill field because it's covered with a blanket, whereas the library turf field is already being used, as Mr. Morreale and I have both pointed out, it's already accessible. So if they go through with this, what is the legal um, relationship can the town pay? for Board of Ed to do that? Because I think that's a lot of people don't understand and I don't have the answer. So what went on at the meeting with the Board of Ed? If they do a referendum in November, would this be on it? I don't know if that was spoken about at your meeting or there are minutes from that meeting. And as long as the par three remains not to be repurposed, I can use that one instead of destroyed, would be a wonderful thing. Thanks. <laughs> Um, so just to answer what, what I can in that, in that, um, those questions, one is, um, when it comes to, um, the ability for the board of ed and for the township to work together, I mean, and a little bit to Mr. Feld's comments is this is the, you know, uh, where, you know, a price or a cost sharing agreement can be put forth. In other words, uh, much like was done with the um, uh, with the library field, we actually entered into a use agreement and there was some cost sharing in that, I think with the scoreboard and things like that. But, um, but with this same thing, uh, the township has the ability to work with the Board of Ed in a, a cost sharing agreement. Um, and that would be decided by both um, governing bodies, the township committee and the Board of Education. Um, as far as what happened in the meeting, again, I, I did touch on that. What we discussed was um, the, ab the, the ability to more efficiently use the space and time now as it exists and, and the ability to look at professionally, not sort of, you know, somebody going out and drawing the picture and saying this is the best use of it, but professionally look at um, how that backspace could be better utilized or um, or more playable hours gotten from that. Now, again, you're dealing with two different governing bodies, right? Not the Board of Education as well as the Township Committee. And so that will take some time and that will take some uh, further discussion. But look, uh, it's, it's a good start and it's a good road to be on. So, um, and um, as far as who makes the decision about the feasibility and the the, the par three or, or whatever else may come up. Um, again, we wouldn't, we're engaging in this public process and I'll let Graham speak a little bit more to the um, master plan element in with recreation and open space and what the steps of that are. Um, but that is again, a very public process, um, much like the master plan uh, re-examination in 2018, where you saw there were 650 surveys, it, you know, that survey respondents, it's a very similar process to that. So Graham, if you wanna just touch on that a little bit. Um, yeah, so to kind of just um, provide some insight as to the components of the um, update to the open space and recreation element of the master plan, um, and just to kind of take a step back just to table set a little bit. So um, the municipal land use law defines that there is an overall master plan for the community, and then there are sub component elements uh, that the township can adopt. 
Um, some uh, it, these can include historic preservation elements, uh, open space and recreation elements, different types of plans that guide different components of a community. Um, so the open space and recreation elements in particular um, requires a number of different components. Public participation is obviously paramount in this process. Um, it's to have a conversation like this conversation amongst the community to talk about recreational fields, um, both for you know youth to play, adults, uh, seniors, uh, what kinds of active and passive recreation we need to look at. Um, it includes a needs assessment, which you know, Mr. Mr. Myers has you know, done a lot of work to look at uh, current inventory and needs and uh, you know, approaching how uh, the current facilities are you know, accommodating the, the current demand and where we need to expand and identify potential options. And then the um, element will also go through an analysis, uh, as Mr. Feld alluded to, and looking at what available property is there, what opportunities can we look at to either uh, improve existing conditions of uh, current fields, uh, you know, conversion to turf allows for additional playable hours because grass fields don't turn to mud. Uh, you have a turf field that's usable the next day after a rainstorm. Um, or, you know, expanding new opportunities and creating those new uh, facilities to expand uh, the, the number of fields that we have available. Um, and then there's uh, a requirement that the, the Open Space and Recreation Plan develops an action plan with actual items, steps to take, uh, properties to look at should they become available, um, and steps to, to move and effectuate and implement the, the um, element of the master plan. Um, and one of the, the additional benefits, and it would be that process that would then define feasibility. It would be at that phase that, okay, you know, our, our first priority is this field. Um, let's now undertake that feasibility and make sure we can do this and effectuate this development to accommodate this recreational need. Um, and I think one other thing that I wanted to kind of highlight and wrap into this component is having an updated and accurate and good uh, open space and recreation element of the master plan um, is a great thing for grants and outside funding opportunities uh, because then you can show state, feds, you know, all different funding streams that this community has a unified vision uh, to move forward and improve their recreational facilities. So we can kind of parade this document around and say, this is our priority one, is this field. Um, and that helps folks at DEP, DCA, whatever the state agency may be say, ah, Milburn's got their priorities set. They're ready to move forward on this, this project. Um, so that's kind of how this document will then parlay into the future as we all move forward. But public participation, this meeting tonight, taking notes, glad it's recorded. <laughs> you know, this is all part of the process um, and happy to support that, so. Yeah, just to, just to add to that a bit is also that um, currently the Township Committee is working on a draft resolution that would um, recommend the Planning Board to take up this task. Um, and that includes what they envision a steering committee looking like, uh, which is members of the Recreation Commission, members of the Board of Ed, members of uh, the, um, the staff, members of the public, things like that. So that's all already in the works um, as we have this discussion now. So. Hi, I'm Peter Langerman. Uh, I live at Arlene, 11 Arlene Court, which is one of the houses that's right on the, uh, the edge of the Parthby course. Um, and we've lived there for over 30 years. Two kids went through the schools, the whole thing. Um, I just wanted to make a comment about process. I'm, I'm glad to hear about the tone of opening this up and very transparent. I can say that when, when I first got the, the initial PowerPoint and, and read it, and we happened to be away, it, it almost sounded like it was a done deal that the par three course was the preferred option. And it was sort of just, let's just check the boxes. And that was quite disturbing. Um, and that led to among the neighbors, you know, rumors about, oh, they're gonna open up the road and there's gonna be a flow through of cars coming through the neighborhood and, you know, all kinds of stuff. So I would just, you know, recommend, and I'm sure you're sensitive to this, that, you know, the way, the way not to have that happen, the way not to have people get very upset about process and, and potential results is, is to be open. And, and I think you're doing that tonight, but for some reason, maybe there was miscommunication, maybe it was a misunderstanding, but I think people, at least in our neighborhood, thought that this was way farther down the road and it was almost like a done deal. And, and people got very upset about that. No, I can, uh, I can appreciate that. And I think that just kind of circling back to the fact that the ask one is that you've heard about some of these instances in which the recreation department um, has looked into fields and done studies or, or whatever it may be. And that was not a um, necessarily a public process. That was something that we were looking at internally and going through. And in particular, this particular subject was very much purposely brought to the Township Committee to ask for a feasibility study so that it would be public and so that those steps could be then, uh, uh, you know, adhere to in the public discussions and different things like that. So completely understand what you're saying. Um, and, you know, again, um, just pleased that we have so much interest in participation in, in, in this process now going forward. Hi, 
you guys all know me. Um, I have three I very. Oh, here. Um, I have three athletic boys. Um, they did practically every sport that the town offers. We love the rec department. They played football and basketball and soccer and baseball and went up all through high school. Um, they also worked for the rec department as counselors at the camp. And we have loved everything about Melbourne Rec. Um, traveling around the state of New Jersey for various sports, we see what other towns have and it's not what we have. We don't have the fields. There are these palaces, <laughs> sometimes in Essex County, all over the state where you're like, wow, how did they get this? And how come we don't have it? Um, I've done field maintenance <laughs> on some of these muddy fields. And I know what our volunteers and our grounds crews go through to make them playable. Um, I was always in favor of getting more fields for a town. A couple of weeks ago, when we were at the township committee meeting, we found out that it would be at the expense and the destruction of the part three I was very conflicted because my boys love playing on that course. We have kids from 10 years old to probably in their 90s using that facility and truly enjoying it. It's something that if it were to be destroyed could never ever come back in any way. Um, and I really think that would be unfortunate for our town. Um, I understand we have to work with the Board of Ed, and I guess I have two main questions for you. Um, the first is, what is the Joint Facilities Committee that is staffed by, I believe, both BOE and Township people on it? <coughs> and is that over both entities in terms of decision making? In which case, I don't understand how an elementary school principal could veto field usage, which we have heard from you has happened. And then my second question is, are there any county lands available for us to have some kind of county facility where it's not just, you know, Milburn money going into this? Um, so those are my two questions. And then also just to point out that your stats are awesome, um, but I would also point out that Verona and Summit may have more fields than we do, but we have more baseball and soccer championships than they do. <laughs> <laughs> the joint facilities. <laughs> Hello. Okay, so I'll answer the question in regards to um, vetoing uh, field use. Um, the field usages are not vetoed by principals. Uh, we, we are in a joint uh, dealing with the Board of Ed that we are the, they are the primary user, we are the secondary user, um, and that all that um, goes through um, the business office, uh, goes through the athletic director. It does go through the school office as far as whether the rec department can use it or not use it. So the activity that was proposed um, at that facility um, does happen within our organization. We have clinics there in that one particular area um, of cricket. Um, the possible development of a cricket field there was an, again, an idea that did not fit into the whole structure of what goes on at the school there, physical education, after school activities that the school may have, um, outdoor lunch period, things like that. So again, it was an idea that was um, one of the best situations. And it, at this point, it did not work. In the future, it could. We don't know that. We, again, looked at other school areas, other park areas, and at this point, that's not an activity that the community can have as far as in the size that's, that's needed. Uh, we just don't have a facility for it at this point. 
um, on the lower ends with clinics and things like that, where there's not highly athletic activity within that sport, we can do that. Um, in the future, when we get to this point where we have a complex or another area, it might be a multi-use activity on a, on a field. Just say if we went behind the high school and we were able to redevelop that, we might be able to include that there. It's just an idea. Um, but let me just set the record straight as I did at the last meeting. The relationship between the Board of Ed and the Recreation Department is a thousand percent strong. Recreation could not exist without the help of Board of Ed, whether it be use of gyms, use of fields, and the cooperation that we get between the principals, the secretaries, the custodians, the maintenance staff, the athletic director, the Board of Ed staff itself is tremendous. It does not happen in other towns. And I'm very active in Essex County with all the travel sports that we have. And I could say Milburn's at the top when it comes to that relationship. Um, your second question in regards to the Joint Facilities Committee, that was created um, to use the uh, expertise of the Rec Department as well as the Board of Ed to do the betterment of grass fields that we had. Um, put our heads together, see what um, type of projects we could do, ways that we could, we got into a maintenance program. All the schools other than a few are irrigated at this point. Um, we do maintenance on those fields four times a year with fertilization. We constantly put grass seed down. I mean, you see those blankets out there. There's 14 of those in the system. Um, it, you could tell that by the drive by the paper mill between the end of November and what you're looking at now is like, it's, it's awesome. I mean, I learned it way back when I was working in the golf course industry that we were putting them on greens. And if you want them for your front yard or your backyard, I can tell you where to get them and you'll have the best looking lawn in town. Um, but the, the, the joint facilities committee is members of the board of ed, members of the rec department, some members of the town commit, committee, the rec commission. It's more of a think tank. It's an idea thing. Um, myself, I work with the uh, athletic director and the buildings and ground supervisor at the high school to take care of the maintenance and oversee the high school. And then I work with the maintenance guys at the, at the schools with things that might be need attention as well as our maintenance staff and our DPW. So it's, it's, it's not a, it's a activity type committee, uh, think tank, things we can do to improve things. Um, any of the rental money that comes in from outside clinics that might come in or our own, like the, the people that are in the soccer club, their kids pay a, a small facility fee and that fee goes into a fund that's held by the board of ed and we pay for the maintenance on the fields that way rather than it coming out of you know tax dollars. Um, so it's, it's a very active and, and good, good way of doing things. And then we get revenue from outside, you know, like uh, Columbia High School came in last year and rented the field in the summer when they had some issues with, with their complex and they were redoing things. So all that, that money gets used and just keeps, keeps going and going and going. It's not a profit making thing, it's to buy supplies and put irrigation and fix irrigation heads and things like that. So I hope that answers your question. David Morrow, I've been a resident here since 2014. Uh, I coached girls softball and girls soccer for a number of years. I know these two gentlemen work very, very hard, as does Alex. They're, they have very difficult jobs. Uh, the thing that I think we really need to focus on, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that a committee is starting to be set up, is that there's a number of new members of both the township committee, of the board of ed, and these gentlemen have the experience in town. The fields are very important to Milburn, the fabric of Milburn, the youth of Milburn. Uh, a steering committee or the committee should be focused on this as a goal to find the solutions. And the finance director for Milburn Township should be part of that, as should members of the Board of Ed and members of the Township Committee and these three gentlemen here. Thank you. 
Anybody else from the room before we turn it over to Zoom here? Hi, Jay Morielli, and thank you for holding the second presentation. I think it's extremely valuable, um, both for the community to hear the thoughts uh, and the process that the township's going through, and for the township to hear from the community. Um, I'd just like to say a couple things. Um, number one, um, Master Plan 2018, Graham put it up, said, we should acquire new lands for sports fields. We're gonna do another master plan. What's gonna be different this time? Lands are available. JFK Parkway, New Jersey Water, sold eight acres of land recently. Did we, did we have we inquired since then if they're willing to sell more land? We should consider leasing. Nothing wrong with leasing. There's a benefit to leasing. If we take a 10 or 20 year lease and better facilities become available between now and when the lease is up, we can walk away. If they're not willing to sell it, we should consider leasing. There's very little downside to it as long as the lease is structured in a way that we can make best use of it and we can get out of it if we need to, that's fine. Uh, my kids, like Carrie, my kids benefited greatly from the sports programs uh, in town. Uh, they ran track, they played baseball, they swam, they were employed, they ran the summer rec swim programs. Um, this is a great town. Um, we should not be adverse to looking at options, as were indicated in the 2018 master plan, to get new lands for sports fields. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. Okay, I'll uh, I'll go to Zoom and att attempt my technical abilities here. Um, uh, so, if there are individuals in the pub, uh, yeah, okay. raise raise your hand if you're in interested in in speaking. <laughs> Tiffany. Great. Yes. Hi, this is Frank Fahrenbach. Uh, Tiffany is my wife. Uh, thank you all for uh, the comments tonight. We, we're longtime residents here, likewise, of, of Milburn and uh, echo all the comments to to coaching and so forth. Uh, my question is on the wetlands. So I've done some quick analysis. It's very rough, right, in terms of Google Maps. But behind in Jiro Park, behind the four baseball fields, there is this land. Right. Um, and, and you've designated that as wetlands. But I, I, I was on the field crew for many years at, at Giro, and most of that's wet. Uh, that's a whole nother issue. Right. In terms of, of, of the wetness of that field. But I would think a good drainage system for part of that existing land would open up thousands of square feet that are, is, is literally right next to existing fields as part of Giro Park. Maybe you could comment on that. Well, I'll just comment and maybe Graham can chime in too, but uh, we don't designate the, the wetlands. Um, also, the, um, there's, there's, there is a pretty severe slope there. So there is like what we were looking at was more at the intersection of the ramp from JFK to, uh, to Parsonage Hill. Um, because anything that is sort of in close proximity to the ball fields up there at the top uh, does then have sort of a severe slope. Um, but but again, um, it's not us that designates the wetlands, and there are some pretty strict rules around the disturbance of wetlands. So, Graham, I don't know if you want to comment that on that a little bit. Yeah, happy to share some more. Um, so, you know, and, and that's why as part of the master plan process, you know, and looking at the uh, land availability uh, with additional site constraint information, such as slopes and or wetlands information, uh, this will help inform the process of what lands may be available uh, for future use. Uh, the other item that I just wanted to raise, uh, as Alex alluded to, is that uh, wetlands encroachments require uh, much much higher permitting uh, from the state in order to do that. Um, so that can be another barrier hurdle uh, to effectuate any development of fields on those types of lands. Um, you know, it's kind of dependent on the outcome of that decision by the state to, to encroach upon wetlands. 
Yeah, that particular area, if we're talking about the same area, that was the one that's behind field B. Um, we had the study done back in March of last year. Um, it's about three acres and the uh, the wetlands review came back that it's it's all wetlands back there. Can you post that study? Sure. Anyway, just one, one final comment there. Sure. I appreciate it. it's wetlands and it's been designated wetlands, but I mean, for all these other challenges in different parts of the town that we would have to go through, and, and I like the lease idea, I like, you know, looking at other parts of, of Board of Education control, et cetera. This part right here, I mean, it's, it's yes, moving trees and moving dirt and, and putting in some drainage to, to existing field space. So anyway, just a quick comment. Thanks again. Thank you. Yeah, I think again, we're gonna there. There will be certain constraints and barriers on many of uh, of the available properties or lands, and so there also might be uh, a um, you know sort of making a determination through this process of what is something that uh, we as a community are willing to uh, approach despite the barriers. Stephen. Yeah. yeah. Steven, you have to unmute yourself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This, uh, my name is Steve Friedman. Uh, very happy to hear that um, the demolition of the part three is something that's not being considered currently. Um, as many others have said, it's just a, a phenomenal part of, of living in Milburn. And it, it seems to me that it really makes our town unique. Our town's unique in a lot of ways, but it's certainly one of the things that uh, is a tremendous asset to have in town. So I'm happy to hear that that's not a, a, a you know, something that's currently being considered. Uh, and that's all, thank you. Thank you. Al, 30. Hi, um, I'd like to just, I guess, um, say thank you to everyone. Uh, this public hearing. Um, I'm not as old as everyone. Uh, previous people that have been speaking about it have been here since about 2018. Uh, both my kids are relatively young. Uh, we've done the community soccer um, league a few times. We're part of the Melbourne Soccer Club. I've coached in the community soccer league. Um, so I do know and understand the field issues, uh, especially in the fall when it rains. Um, we know there's quite a few fields that just aren't playable. Um, so outside of drainage issues, you know, for those fields, I don't know if you guys talked about it, maybe I missed it earlier. You know, that's that's one thing I'd like to ask. Um, the other thing too, especially in the fall, um, you know, I don't know if it's a thing, but I know we had asked the town to kind of chip in for lights at the investors or the library field. Um, but was there any ideas to put lights um, at like Washington? Um, obviously Washington has drainage problems too, but you know, like lights at Washington or Glenwood or Deerfield, uh, so that some of the kids can play in the fall a little later. Um, because I've had practices there at you know, like six o'clock and it starts to get pretty dark for the kids to even see. Um, so, you know, in terms of extending just playtime, you know, field lights may be helpful. Um, and then additionally, um, I just really have some questions about, you know, the leasing land and buying land. Um, kind of like the person before me, you know, Google Maps, you know, there's plenty of solar panels across the street from East Orange Golf Course, and there looks like there's plenty of space there. There's even like a big dug out on the other side. Um, I think that's the uh, South Mountain Park on Brookside Drive. There's like a big plot of land that's just dug out with no trees. Is that plot of land leasable, you know, and then just throw in some courts, uh, some fields there? Um, there's no trees that need to be dug out. I think it's probably just a slope, right? So you probably just have to re, uh, re flatten that spot. So I know there's a bunch of things in there, but um, any answers, that'd, that'd be great. If not, I can also put this in writing and submit it uh, through the Google sheet as well, Google Docs. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I mean, just to, just to comment on that, I think that 
that you know that 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 land in South Mountain Reservation is kind of going back to to Carrie's point and whether there's a conversation with the county that takes place or if that's something that that is something that the community would like to approach in terms of you know that particular space um you know but but I think that looking at all possibilities is 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 why we're here um and reevaluating those that we have already looked at as well um certainly you know we want to make sure that we have as comprehensive a process as possible because this will be the guiding sort of document and 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 force going forward as we continue to you know look to alleviate this issue so and the other thing I want to add to what Alan was talking about, um, a good point about the lights is you know, that we talked about how the, tur the artificial turf adds to the playable hours, you know, less chance of fields uh, being turned into mud. Um, but lights is what really adds a lot of playable hours because you're saying it's almost like adding another field, you know, it's adding time that we didn't have before. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, we're going to be reviewing all the different areas of current fields and seeing if there's places that we could put lights. Um, you know, over at the library, it's a great example of how it's it's worked out in terms of um, the LED technology for lights. It's a lot different now than um, um, and it was in the past. There's a, a pretty strict cutoff. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's it's pretty remarkable. I remember when we uh, we turned on the lights for the first time, we looked up and we thought maybe some of them weren't on because you, you can't you can't tell um, until until you're actually on the field playing. So um, that's definitely something we're going to look into as other options at, at current facilities. Regina. Oh, hey. Good evening, everyone. And wanted to say, first of all, thanks to all the volunteers of the rec department and the employees that are there tonight and all the people that are there tonight. It's really nice to see. Um, tuning in, uh, really happy to hear that it sounds like the Milburn Par 3 golf course uh, may be off the table for now. Um, it's a beautiful place. Um, was unhappy to see that there could have been a significant and permanent loss of trees and hills and habitat, but it sounds like you're moving on to other possible solutions. Just wanted to chime in. Um, some of the people have mentioned artificial turf fields. And of course, about 20 years ago, this seemed like the answer to our prayers. Since then, I, there's been some studies. Um, artificial turf fields are known to leach polyfluoral alkyl uh, substances, otherwise known as PFAs, which are forever chemicals that can dissolve into water and have serious health effects on humans. Um, one of my concerns with the Giro Park fields was that it was perilously close to our water drinking supply, but it sounds like we're looking for other solutions. Of note, um, Boston has recently banned any new artificial turf fields in public parks, public parks due to concerns about toxicity. Um, I can go on about that, but just also briefly, artificial turf fields are also known to create heat islands the race surrounding temperatures on the field and in nearby neighborhoods. And um, indeed, due to her co heat concerns on artificial turf, um, some experts recommend that all athletic activity be prohibited midday during hot weather periods. Um, and another concern, environmental concern, is that turf fields can, artificial turf fields can never be completely recycled. The debris largely ends up in landfill and the fields need to be replaced every 10 eight to 10 years. Um, and um, so it's something to keep in mind before turfing um, a lot of fields. And then lastly, injury wise, there are also concerns with artificial turf. Players in the NFL are currently lobbying to have all artificial turf fields replaced with natural grass, citing increased lower extremity injury rates. Um, a recent study evaluated injuries for high school sports players and found a significantly higher injury risk with artificial turf. Um, I have no answers for where to find uh, more fields, it's clear that that would be um, off, an awesome addition to our town. And um, my daughter, of course, enjoyed the rec department as well. And we, um, as a family, enjoyed the opportunity. Um, anyway, thanks again. That's it. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else uh, on Zoom or in the room that would like to make a comment? Okay, um, with that, um, I, again, this meeting has been recorded. We'll make this available on the website as well as the presentation and as well as the previous study of, of that uh, particular area in Jarrell Park. Um, and um, just want to uh, thank everybody for coming out and being 
participatory in this and and you know we look forward to the future participation of the community and um the master plan element as well as uh ongoing discussions as they take place and uh hope everybody has a great night take care